Well, it's time to give you my full review of the Polar Critics Pro. <laughs> so, let's do this. How does it work? Uh, I buy the watch, I wear it for a few weeks, I try it, I test it in the activity that, that I normally do, and I have my review guide that I built myself that I now apply to all the watches that I test. So, uh, first thing, who I am, uh, because it's important to know, because nobody do the same things with its watch. So uh, the sport that I do the most are walking, hiking, cycling, and sometimes running, and sometimes some others, but though those are the principles one. So unfortunately, I didn't test it for cycling because I am Canada and I test it in winter. Uh, but I did do a lot of walking and hiking with it and some running, also multi-sport activity and that's that's what I did uh, with it. So, But, but that's the type of uh, person I am to uh, test that watch. It's important to know because maybe if you are a diver or something like that, you're surely not looking for the same thing as I do. So let's start with the first point. By the way, you can take a look at the timeline below. Uh, it is all chaptered, so if I talk about something you're not interested into, well, you can skip to the next point. So, the first point is about the build quality. Uh, it's kind of great on front. It's very great on front. In fact, if you're looking at, on the front, you've got a, 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 a contour, a middle contour. It's a brush middle. Uh, really, really beautiful design. Uh, you've got the engraved... In uh, South, south, north, east, west, uh, beautiful numbers, and everything looks beautiful on front. Uh, on the back, well, it's more plasticky, and I don't really like uh, the frame of that plastic thing. It, it, it's it looks kind of unfinished. Uh, if you look at the um, heart rate sensor, this looks better. I think it, it looks very great and solid and I love the quality material of the uh, heart rate sensor. I think it's really, really well done. Uh, but it does look a lot better uh, on front than on the back. Uh, is it important to have a beautiful back when you in fact wear it on your wrist and you don't really never see the back? That's only you know. Uh, by the way, if you're curious, uh, that is this Garmin Phoenix 7X. Uh, I'm a Garmin guy, but I, I, I'm hoping to test others, uh, other watches. Uh, you, you may realize that I will compare this watch with some others. Now, about the options you have when you buy the watch, uh, there is no size option. That is the only size you can have, uh, but you have the choice between three colors. That one is the black, and I don't know by heart what is the, the two others, but they are more uh, whitey. <laughs> uh, you also have the titanium model. Uh, that one is a little bit more expensive, so you have a, a, a total of four choice when you buy the watch, and that's it. Now let's talk about the GPS precision. Uh, it's very, very good. Uh, I didn't compare it with uh, a watch at the same time. I just wear it and look at the trace it does on the road and uh, everywhere I pass. And it seems to be very accurate. Maybe sometime when I'm into the forest with the trees and probably with bad weather, uh, I do see a little bit of deviation but it's really really tiny so gps gps uh the gps is really good it record your exact position and i never had trouble with it and now let's talk about the hearth rate sensor and this is the strong point about polar uh i would not say that it's the best but i, I i'm not sure if Maybe equal with Garmin, with the with the latest uh, hearth rate sensor of Garmin, the one I have on the Garmin uh, Phoenix Seven, the Apex Two, uh, uh, 
the Inst Tank 2, uh, all their last uh, one at Garmin call, go, goes very, very well. At Polar, uh, it, it's either equal or just a tiny bit better. Uh, well, <laughs> so it works very well. It follow my heart. I, I feel that it follow my heart uh, very, very well. And the thing I did realize at Garmin is that if I start an activity really, really hard, um, it may take a few minutes before it crank up my hearth rate while I feel it should be higher than what it shows. And with Polar, it's it's more instant. Uh, that's what I feel. That's what I feel. So it's probably the best hearth rate you can have on any watch. Especially if you compare with Koros and Sunto. Uh, so the, the, the hearth rate sensor of, of Sunto watches is just... It's, it's a joke. It's a joke. And if you got Koros, uh, getting better and better, but it's not yet up to the point for me. The next point is how the watch is independent from any other thing. <laughs> what I mean by that is that I will again compare with Garmin. With my Garmin, if I want to uh, edit my activity page, I can do it straight on the watch. If I want to change my watch face, I can do it straight on the watch. If I want to change uh, my uh, miles to kilometers, I can do it on the watch. I can do everything on the watch. With that one, well, most of the thing you will be able to modify will be on the app. So it is dependent from the app. Uh, it can be the Polar Flow app on Android and iOS, or it can be the flow.polar.com website. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, it's it's kind of well done. Uh, you can go on the website with your big screen. You can go on the Polar Flow app and do your modification and then sync your watch and it's done. It's kind of easy, but still you need an app. You can't do all of your stuff straight into the watch. And at the end, if you want to sync your activity with the Polar Flow app, uh, well, you need to, if you just finish the activity and the phone is nearby, the sync should be done automatically. But if it's not in the seconds that follow the end of the activity, you will have to press and hold the lower button. Not a big deal. And it will sync with your phone. Um, it can also sync automatically with Strava. So when it's synced to Polarflow, Polarflow sent it to uh, Strava. Again, that, that is well done. Uh, but yeah, still, uh, you are very dependent of the app. You can also sync it with the uh, Polar Flow Sync app that you can download on your Mac or Windows. Um, but but I did try it and it didn't work for me. I didn't try more than 20 minutes. Uh, probably I, I would be able to make it work. Maybe I was just unlucky, but it didn't work for me. Uh, the app freeze after the, the sync the app wasn't freeze but the the sync was freezed after about 20 to 30 seconds and all the time i try it i try to reboot my uh my computer i try to reboot the watch i try to reinstall the app it just doesn't work i guess it does work but for me it didn't work the next point is about reversing the watch and it's not possible. It's a point that I uh, give in all of my reviews because I discovered that feature with Koros. Uh, I think every Koros watch, you can just take it and reverse it. And it's kind of it's kind of a big deal if you are right-handed, left-handed, right-handed, whatever. You can set it on the on, on the end you want and kind of use it the way it is uh, meant to be. I mean. This one has been think that uh, the thumb do those button and the index do those ones. So if you take it on that side, uh, it doesn't operate the same way. Or maybe you would like to have it on that side to control a different way on that one. Well, you can do that with Kuros. You can't do that with Polar. As far as I know, only Kuros do that. And well, I think it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's very, very convenient, I think, 
that uh, Kuros did that. And, well, Polar don't. Now, let's talk about the quantity of sport available. And this, this is huge. It's probably the watch that you can buy that give you the most option for the sport available. I did count somewhere between 140 and 150. I just didn't count it many times to arrive to a pr precise number, but it's over 140. That's a lot. So you may do a sport that nobody know, it's probably there. The only downside is that all of the, those sport is not available straight into the watch. So you can have up to 20 at the same time. But if you don't do more than 20 sport on a regular basis, well, you're fine. That's, that's really, really great. Most of the sport I do with the other big watch of that category, I don't talk about the little watch at $200. Uh, the other watches uh, at a high uh, price point give a lot of sport, but n not that much. Uh, I, I mean, if I wanna do inline skating, generally it's not available and there it is you want to do uh, tennis pilates uh, yoga bike uh, oh buy a electric bike uh, mountain biking road bike uh, you have all of those categories inside all of the sport so that's that's really really well done now let's talk about how you can edit or customize the watch face that is kind of terrible. Um, I don't like the way the interface is made on the watch face because, well, the way it's made is that uh, on that one, I am on the cardio page and now I've got Thursday. I've got the date, the time, and it says find your speed. And that's it. Probably because I'm not wearing it. I can have the weather. I can have my uh, minute of activities. I can have my uh, a screen to control the music of my phone. We'll come back to that later. I've got my elevation, but I need to press a button every time to access a data. Uh, you can remove some data, but you can't just have a bunch of information of a bunch of information on the main screen. I would like to have the ability. That's great. We have the weather on it on this. And that's a very great point because I love to have weather on my watch because when I want to go outside to do an activity, especially in winter, I want to know how will I, what, what, what will I wear? Uh, and in Canada, it can make a, a lot of difference from a day to another because, well, today actually it's five, but maybe tomorrow it will be minus 30. That's possible, and that happened a lot here. So, <laughs> yeah, temperature changed a lot. So the only thing I have to do with my Garmin is, and I've got the time just right there. With that one, I may have to press multiple buttons to access it, even on the main page, because the main page is built to, to be navigated. It's kind of weird. So if I'm on that page, which is the... Um, Activity minute of the day. Well, I need to press one time, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven time. Uh, that's a worst case scenario. But I do have to press eleven time to get access to the information that I want from the main page. That is kind of terrible. Uh, of course, you can, if, if there is data you don't really want to see, you can remove it. But I would like to have the ability to get the weather, the altitude, uh, the number of steps of my day. Um, what else do I have? Uh, the battery, battery percentage left, uh, my altitude, um, the sunset time. I, I have all those, uh, those information here straight on the same page, right here. Time, date, altitude, time set, step. Highs and lows of the day, temper actual temperatures and battery left and hearth rate also. All on the same page here. And on that one, I can I always have date and time and one more information that I need to navigate through to get it. So poorly, poorly done. 
and well you can't really edit it you can remove or add page and that's it that that's really it you can have more information when you get into it but anyway we'll come back to that uh, later uh, but yeah you can also choose to have the numbers as you see 1452 or you can also have the analog one with the with the hands uh, but edit the watch face is again poorly done so to do it you need to enter into a menu and then into a sub menu and then and then i think into another sub menu and from that one you can change what will be on the main page by a description in fact just a title and if you, you don't have any preview of it so if you want to see what it does you have to exit the sub menu then the other sub menu then the menu to come back on the main page to see if you like it and if you don't like it and want to modify it you need to go back into the menu the sub menu and the sub menu and then change it and you can also change the color you can change some things but every time you want to see what it does you have to exit it and, and it's really really it's really really bad now let's come back to the widget uh so i told you a widget a widget what, what is a widget for me a widget is uh, a page in which you have some information uh on something so like for example this one uh it's the weather so actually i can see the weather and if i want to have more information onto it i can press the right button to get into it and then i have more information and again uh, it, it's it's poorly done i they made everything on a single page that is like this long so you're scrolling into that page so if you want to see the very last information you have to press the down button or swipe on the screen uh many many times and swiping on the screen we'll, we'll come back on that later <laughs> um yeah it's 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 poorly done and it's it's slow so slow to navigate into it so you see that's that's the weather can you see it yes okay so let's say i want to go inside it so i click and now i can see it you see it takes a bit of time and if i want to go out i press that button and then well oh uh, press eh, and now i'm out so you see there's a big delay and it's it's always like that if i change if i change page uh okay change page click that's kind of more quickie but you see every time it does change there's a loading something uh, those ones are fine anyway if i go into the menu you see i did click click and then it goes click and then it goes click and then it goes there's always that delay so yeah not not very very fun to navigate into it, it's slow and you see the weather so there is uh i go into the page i wait now i've got the actual temperature and then i go down and i can see uh rain uh in coming weather for the next hours and going down in the next days and it's keep go it's keep going going down okay we, we reach it but anyway i why they don't made some pages to navigate more quickly to the information that you want instead of just scrolling on a single page it's the same thing for all the widget uh all made on a very very long page and it's poorly designed so there's a lot of widget there's a lot of information you can have but it's poorly presented now let's talk about the multi-sport mode that is very well done that is very very well done the only downside there is is that you need to say at the beginning that this is a multi-sport so if for example you go for a walk and you think you will just walk and at some time you tell yourself well now i want to run uh well you can run on your walk activity that's for sure but if you want to change the page and do a multi-sport activity well you can't because you start a walk activity but uh, if you know 
that you will do walking and then running and then maybe swimming or cycling or whatever you want to do. Uh, if you start a multi-sport activity and then you choose walking, at the point you want to change it, you just have to press the lower left button to change the sport. So you will fail into a transition mode. And then when you're ready to, to run or get on your bike or whatever, you change the next sport, you select it, and then you, you, and then you go. So you will have the, uh, all the settings of your, of your sport activity, not the multi-sport one, but the, the sport you are doing right now. And at the end, it will create you a one multi-sport activity with a total of what you did and a separate activity for all of the sport you did. Uh, so yeah, the multi-sport activity is uh, very, very, very well done. If you compare with other watch, some doesn't have multi-sport. So if you want to change board, you have to uh, put an end to the activity and start a new one. And some others, uh, you have to pre-select what you will do in the right order because you can't modify it once the activity is started. That's a bit weird. I, I like the fact that you can change the sport you want to do when you want to do it. Now let's talk about the music control. Uh, if you are the kind of person that like to uh, store the music inside the watch because you don't like to go out with your phone, well, that's not for you. Uh, you can't put music into the into the watch, and you can't connect earphone on the watch. Personally, I think it's a good thing. Um, I never use that because it does drain the battery very very fast so I just never do that but uh, it can control the music of your phone and that is something that I like because uh, in winter I don't have to remove my glove I can play with my phone skip uh, pause play uh, play with the volume too straight on the watch when I do cycling that's the thing that I love because when I'm cycling I have my phone uh, into uh, a pocket at the back and it's playing on speaker so when I stop at a red light and there's some bodies I don't need to take the phone with my wet finger and try to stop it then it doesn't work because uh, sweat <laughs> uh, so I can do it straight on the watch and it goes very very well there's one thing they could done better and it's a shortcut to the app so actually you have to navigate to the music page uh, at Garmin, you can just press and hold the lower left button or any button you want. You can create the shortcut you want to arrive on that page and do the modification you want. On that one, you need to navigate to the page and then you can pause, skip or whatever you want to do. And it's kind of weird. Well done. Except the fact that there's no shortcut. Now, let's talk about the battery. Uh, the battery. Um, not, not so good. Not so good for that type of watch. Um, so... Uh, on my first charge, uh, I charge it to 100%, and it lasts me for five days and a half. Five days and a half. On those five days and a half, uh, that include five hours and 15 minutes of GPS, because GPS drain more batteries. <laughs> and I was wearing the watch 24 hours a day, except when I was washing. And I did 44 minutes of inside activity. Uh, inside activity, basically just uh, check your heart rate like the watch do all day long. So I don't think it drains any more battery anyway. Uh, so yeah, I do train between one hour and two hours a day. And that's what it did, five days and a half. It's not terrible, but it's not good neither. Uh, if you go in the same price range at other brands, you do get a lot more of battery than this. Uh, there is no uh, solar charging. And I don't know why, because there's a lot of place to put a solar charging panel on that one, especially because the screen is very tiny in sight, but we'll come back to that later about the estimation of time actually on the main page i can see that i have 70 percent left i would i'd like to see an estimated of time and not of percent but anyway that that's fine but when you do start an activity it does give you that estimated 
So if, for example, uh, I did take a look at this and uh, if I, char I fully charge it and I want to start an activity, it will estimate the GPS time to 35 hours, which is not so bad. Uh, then, uh, if you just use it in a smartwatch mode, so you wear it 24 hours a day, it does uh, calculate your heart rates, uh, track your sleep, uh, maybe get your message from your phone and those kind of thing. Uh, you should have, if you don't use the GPS, charge for seven days a week. Oh, and there's one point. If you arrive at 5% of battery, you can't start an activity. So if the activity is already start, it will drain to zero. But if you are at 5% or less, you cannot start an activity. So the battery is not terrible, but it's also far to be good. Now, let's talk about temperature. I didn't test it into the extreme, but from the Polar recommendation, you can use it from plus 50 Celsius to minus 20. And if you're in Fahrenheit, well, Google it. Okay, and the next point is kind of special. How easy it is to read the screen. <laughs> well, actually, actually, it's very easy to read it because I've got big light just in front of me. I'm in a light environment and it's very easy to read. If you're outside at any moment of the day except night, it is very easy to read because it's bright outside and that is the moment where it is the most easy to read the screen. If you are into um, dark or a bit dark environment, it's getting harder to read. That's why <laughs> they enable the uh, auto, back, auto back lighting when you take a look at your watch. So you do that movement and it auto back light. That's a great thing because with that, it's become very easy to read. And it's very well done because when you take a look at the watch, it does turn on and as soon as you put your, uh, your arms down, it turns off. So it doesn't drain the battery for nothing while you're not looking at it. But that feature of turn on the backlight when you take a look at it is on 24 hours a day. Even when you're asleep. Yikes. Yeah. So you sleep, you move your arm close to your face, and you wake up because you've got that big hollow of light turning on, turning on to your eyes. So you're probably guessing that there's a setting to turn that off. And you're right. Kinda. <laughs> Because the best solution would have been to disable it when you're sleeping. And it would be kind of easy because the watch track your sleep. So the watch know when you are sleeping. But no, they didn't. <laughs> uh, so they could, also, they could also have made a schedule to disable it from, I don't know, uh, 20 o'clock to 7 o'clock maybe. But no, they didn't. You can turn off the backlight completely. So now, if you are into a dark environment and you do press a button, it doesn't turn off, turn on the backlight. You have to, before, press the light button to navigate into it, to, 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 to navigate and see what you do. So you have a step more to do to see when you are using the watch and pressing the button. <laughs> so the way that I find to make it work correctly is to put it on do not disturb mode. But you cannot schedule the do not disturb mode. So it's on do not disturb all the time. And <laughs> when you turn on do not disturb, it disable that movement but I would like to keep it at night, but oh, well, in, at night into activity, but no, no for, forget it, that's not possible. So it just fully disable the, the movement backlight and it keep the button enabled. But it also disable the fact that you can receive notification from your phone on your watch. Come on, come on, 
there's yeah that, that's the point so you have to choose to see well all the time and get disturbed at night or just disable it and maybe double press it or just uh, sacrifice the uh, phone notification anyway we'll talk about phone notification later well no Talk about phone notification just right now, because it's not a great something that you lose, because it's kind of terrible. <laughs> so the way the phone notification works on most watch is that you get a message getting into your phone and boom, you got it on your smart watch screen. So for example, I'm logging on my bank website and they send me a message with the actual code uh, double factor identification I need to input and boom I receive it and I can input it without touching my phone I love it with that one I will get a tiny tiny vibration to tell me that I got something that's the only thing you get so may most of the time you won't notice it because it's a really tiny vibration and <laughs> uh, if you want to see it there is only two ways. You can press the back button sometime because if you already see it and you want to come back to see it, the back button just work one time. So the only other way you have left is to touch your screen. I don't like it. Put your finger in it and I'll, now my, 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 my screen does look gross. And then you have your title of notification and then you can press on it to see more information so when i so when i end the screen touch screen works so bad uh you you remember earlier i told you that everything was laggy well the touch screen is very very laggy so you see i swipe up and it didn't work so i swipe up again and then it doesn't it didn't work three times no four times no no that worked fourth or fifth time it does work now i swipe down doesn't work again oh okay no now it it did work but with a delay but because i think it didn't work like the fourth first time i tried to swipe it up well i did swipe down the other screen and my screen looked gross and the tactile screen is just terrible and well the, the, the notification well don't buy that watch for a notification it's terrible if you don't want to use it that's fine <laughs> now let's talk about how you control the watch and how efficient it is to navigate everywhere um, well the button I don't really like the button it's not this bad maybe it's a question of getting used to it but um, it's not user-friendly I think uh, you've got the up and down button to go up and down you got a select button and then you got a back button but it's a back button sometime because actually you see i'm on the main page if i press the back button i go into the menu and it's the same button that take me out of the menu and when you are into an activity you press on that button to start an activity but on that button to pause it and on that button to restart it and on that button to put an end to it and that one is usually just a light button and some button does have a double function and oh and if you want to have access to uh, that page uh, can you see that page I give quick access and quick access to that uh, the only way to do it is again to swipe on the screen and I don't know why it just got off see it's so not efficient it's all laggy and I don't like it <laughs> I don't like it and you know sometimes you have to go far to do something you, you want to do because it's just poorly designed it's poorly designed now let's talk about the wristband uh it's silicon um i don't like silicon 
wristband, but well, for a silicone wristband, it's very, very good. Uh, it's really flexible and it's soft on the skin. It breathes kind of well. Uh, I like the fact that they, they put a texture texture on the front, like if it was nylon. It may look like nylon. In fact, if I put it side by side to that one, if you take it, take a look at it at this distance, you probably don't see any difference. So it does look good and it's comfortable. Um, you can remove it easily if you want to replace it. You just have to do that. Not the best system that I know, but probably the most uh, popular you will find on most watches. Uh, it's kind of quick to replace it, but <sighs> just because I do it on camera, it's, it doesn't work so well. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, the wristband is kind of great, but I would have liked to have an nylon band. Now, let's talk about my confidence into the precision of the data that I get with it. And that is really, really high. Uh, like I told you earlier, my GPS tracking was always very fine, uh, always on the good side of the road and uh, those things does follow really where I pass. The earth rate does work well. You also got a, a barometric altimeter that does a wonderful job. If I go climb a mountain, I will have about the same meters climb than uh, downed. Um, every data that you get at the end is accurate and I have a high confidence into it. Kudos, Pollard. Now let's talk about water resistance, and this is another very good point. It's rated at 10 ADM. This means you can dive up to 100 meters deep inside waters, which is kind of deep. <laughs> and you can also, uh, don't worry about washing your hand, taking a shower with it, swimming, um, uh, jet skiing, uh, jumping into water, uh, diving into water at any altitude, that's totally fine. You don't have to worry about water getting into your watch. That is a great grading of ATM. Okay, now let's talk about mapping. And this is a terrible point because there is no mapping. <laughs> Come on, Pollard. We are in 2022. Why does your watch doesn't have a map? For me, it's a big deal. Uh, since I discover having map with my Garmin, I don't want a watch that doesn't have mapping. Uh, the only thing you will have inside mapping is, <laughs> is a point or an arrow drawing a line on a black background. That's it. Of course, that's way better than nothing. Uh, it did already save my life twice not with that watch with my good old uh, Sunjo MB2 uh, I was able to come back on my feet because I was seeing the light the, the, the line and where I am and I just had to walk back on the line that's a great feature in 2015 not today I mean, today I want to see the map I want to see the road I want to see the elevation I want to see the lakes I want to see it on the screen why it's not there? Actually, what you can do is to predict in advance uh, using Komoot because they use uh, Komoot. Komoot is a, a third party application, a very great application in which you can create, you can plan route if you're, you're, if you're using your phone instead of your watch to create a route and follow a road and see everything, the elevation, the, the mountain, the lakes, the forest, the park, the road, the, the street, the whatever, you can see everything into it. But you can create an itinerary into Komoot and sync your Komoot app with Polar and Polar will show you the line, just the line, not the elevation, not nothing, just the line. So you can follow the line. So if you arrive at an intersection, and you're looking at it and well, is it right or left? Seems to be left. I will try to go left and see if I follow the right line. While when you only have a map at your wrist, you clearly see that, well, it's that road because that's the others and that's the one I, I want to go. That's 
more obvious um, with my Garmin also if I want to go somewhere search for a restaurant I just search it on the watch and seriously it goes very very well and it will create me an itinerary because it does have the map and it can and it's a routable map and here well you don't even have a map come on come on Paula put a map into your watch now let's talk about the glass and that is a really really good point because it's sapphire crystal glass and that is the glass that i recommend to everybody to have on their watch because when you pay a few hundred dollars for a watch the last thing you want is to have a big scratch on your screen because uh, you knock it on something and when you do have a sapphire crystal glass you don't have to care about this because it's nearly indestructible you can hit it on almost anything a rock uh, you can try to play with uh, <laughs> a knife onto your screen and you don't have to care about it because it's almost almost not scratchable in fact i never succeed to scratch a sapphire crystal glass on a watch never never and even there it's 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 well done because it's it's a little bit incrustated under uh, the bezel so less chances to knock it on something and even if you knock it on something it shouldn't broke because it's very very solid the next point is about the size of the watch and the screen inside of it so let's start with the watch uh, the watch is a regular um, is a regular watch. It's not a small watch and it's not a big watch. If we look at this one, which is the Garmin Phoenix 7X, X for bigger, you got at Phoenix, you got the Phoenix, the Phoenix 6X, which is bigger, and the Phoenix S, which is small. Uh, so if I put them uh, both side by side, you can see that the uh, Polar is smaller. It is smaller. But it's a regular watch. It's it's not a big watch. This is a big watch. This is a normal watch. And you got smaller watch. Um, so that's the normal size of the watch. But the thing is that the screen inside is small. Uh, in fact, I didn't compare it with the Phoenix S. And the size of the screen on both the device is the same. Because there is a huge bezel around the screen and I don't understand why it's just a black bezel and it's going to look like what you can get in 2015 why why make your screen bigger take make let, let's the screen take more place because that's that is what you are looking for on your watch so you have a, a normal size watch with a small screen size come on and it's a total waste because they could have put a solar charging panel to make the battery last longer but they didn't it's just a waste of space there's nothing there there's few lines and the polar logo that's it it's totally useless the next point is about storing and that's good well in fact why do i have to mention it <coughs> Yeah, because Sunto, you can't turn off the watch. With Polar, you can turn off the watch. Uh, yeah, you just have to press and hold the right button for a few seconds until you see the Polar logo. Eventually, yeah, now, and then you wait, and then you release, and then the watch goes off. And then, so, so that, that's great, because if you just want to leave it on your desk put it into something in the box or whatever and just use it in two or three months well if you store it with a full battery when you take it back in a few months or years or weeks or days the battery will still be full you just have to press and hold the right button again and it turns on instead of having an empty battery <coughs> Okay, now let's talk about the weight of the watch. Well, it's not a heavy watch, but it's not a light watch. Far to be it. <laughs> uh, the watch is designed to be durable and not light. If you want the very same watch, 
in a lighter case, you will look for the Vintage V2. Is it V2? Vintage, no, just Vintage 2. Polar Vintage 2. It's the same, I didn't test it. I just know it's the same watch. That You got the same thing in the inside. It just made, the Vintage 2 is made to be light and the Critics Pro is made to be durable, but it's the same watch. Uh, if you look at the Vintage 2, you got, I think everything is in plastic. Uh, because plastic is lighter than metal and you don't have the sapphire glass neither because sapphire glass is more heavier than it's probably a gorilla glass or something like that now i've got that question quite often what language are available so we're speaking about indonesian sustain i don't know even what that language is czech danish german english spanish french italian japanese uh, dutch Norwegian, Polsky, Portuguese, Chinese, Russian, Finnish, Swiss. Swiss is not a language. Uh, I think it was Sweden. Sweden and Turkish. The next point is about how information you can have onto a single page when you are into an activity. Uh, this is bad. Probably because the screen is very small, but it's only four. On that one I can have up to eight. Just four. That's not enough. So you'll probably, depending on what you do, might need to sometime change page to see the information you would like to have. If you're walking, that's not too bad. If you are cycling, well, it's, it's not fun. I'd like to have all the information I want on the same page. Only four here. You can have multiple page but only for information on a single page. And there's one thing that is also poorly done, is that you can't have in the same activity, doesn't ma matter on what page you are, into the same activity, you have to choose between pace and speed. So if you wanna know on, if you wanna know, uh, for example, your average speed, but actual pace, that's not possible. <laughs> you have to choose. You have to choose. You can have average speed and actual speed or average pace and actual pace. But not speed and pace, not in the same activity. I don't know why. That's kind of weird. The next point is about the alarm clock. And ah, they are not so far to be the best alarm clock, but uh, it's really not because of something really stupid. Let's talk about the good thing first. Um, I like the alarm. I really like it. It's really, really well done. When I think of, uh, of, of an alarm, I always think that I will maybe not be the only one sleeping into that room. But I also make sure that I will wake up. So the way it works is that it starts vibrating really, really slowly and then it increase and it become stronger and stronger. And at some point, if you didn't do anything because you're still asleep, uh, there is a beeping coming in. So at very low volume and it increase and increase and increase and it only uh, ring for a minute. After one minute, it's, it's finished. But at the end, it does vibrate really, really hard. And the beeping is kind of also hard, especially for something that cannot be at a bigger distance than this because it's on your wrist so it's really really well done but <laughs> the thing that is stupid is that you can set the alarm for once so i set it just right now and it will ring only once i can set it for weekdays so monday to friday or every days so every days and that's it so if you want to have an alarm for weekends you can't if you have if you want to have an alarm for wednesday you can't tuesday to thursday you can't it's really only those three options once weekdays or all days come on 
come on, it would not be complicated to integrate. Why not just a custom Tuesdays and Fridays? I don't know. Who are you to choose when people will choose to have an alarm? Come on. Anyway, let's go to a more positive point. The sleep tracking. Really, really well done. Um, I would say that it's from all the watch brand uh, uh, that I use. I mean, Garmin, Suunto, Kuros, and Poller. Uh, it's probably the best sleeping tr sleep tracking uh, that I have. Uh, always accurate. Uh, tell me at the right time I go to sleep, at the right time I wake up. Um, and I love to watch the graphic it, it does give at the end on the application. Very precise, a lot of information. Uh, it's really, really well done. Really, really well done. The next point is how the watch will motivate you to move. And they got something great. I mean, for me, the watch doesn't have to give me notification for me to move. I move every day. I do sport every day. No exception. I do really sport every day. And the watch is a, motiva a motivation on its own because it just recorded the activity. And it's a proof that I can see it on my calendar. And I love that. Um, I did get some watch that give me some notification like... Congratulations, you walked 500 steps today. And congratulations, you uh, climbed 10 floors today. I don't like that. I really, really don't like that. I don't need those kind of notification in the day. But that one, that one did something that make me move even more. Pollard wants you to move at least a bit every hour. And I do work just right there uh, in front of my computer or right here in front of the camera. And I don't move a lot into that time. I sit on a chair and I don't, I don't really move. It's, it's not that bad because I move every day. But Polly wants you to move at least a bit every hour. So when you don't move for 20, 55 minutes, it does ring and it tells you, well... You now have five minutes to move or you will have an inactivity stamps on your calendar and that motivated me to move a little bit so while wearing that watch i did start doing some push-up or uh squat or those kind of things just beside my desk just because i didn't want to have my inactivity step and i think it's great i think it's really really great because it did make me move a little bit a little bit more but if you still think that this will be annoying you can disable it the next point is about sharing your hearth rate what is that well if you have another device like a tax or a, a thread miles or uh, something something that needs to get to receive your hearth rate you can use your watch your watch has a hearth rate sensor to share the hearth rate you got on the back to another device so well you can the only weird thing there is is that you cannot just share it you have to start an activity that will share it that's a bit weird because at the end uh, I'm looking at all my activities on Strava so if I record an activity with that one and that one will sync to Strava and I record my activity with tax my um, indoor bike application uh, I will have twice my activity on Strava, so I will have to delete that one. That, that's a bit weird, but well, it's not this terrible. Not like the backlight stuff I told you earlier. Uh, the next point is about its resistance to disuse. What is this? Well, there is two points to see. Building quality, um, I think it will last long. Uh, great production quality it's probably a watch it, it's not a watch I don't know uh, I have it since only few months but I don't think it's the watch that will die in a year and a half just after its warranty uh, I sincerely think just by looking at it and feeling it it's solid and nothing shake inside it it's really well done 
I sincerely think it's a watch that can last you over 10 years. But, <laughs> um, like I told you earlier, it's very dependent to its app. So, its resistance to disuse is totally regarding polar health. So, if polar go bankrupt, Everything shut down. They no longer have application. You cannot download the application anymore. You cannot sync to the Polar server to have your activity. Well, you kind of end up with an empty shell. If Polar is not there anymore, you have an empty shell. Yes, you can record your activity, but you can't sync it to Strava or the app after that. It's just stuck inside it. You cannot put a new itinerary you just record on Komoot. You really end up with almost an empty shell. So yeah, its resistance to disuse is all about Polar, the company, health. If I go, for example, with my Garmin, well, because I can edit everything, Yes, because if the if you no longer have a Polar app, you cannot edit your sport activity. Huh? So with my Garmin, I can edit everything straight on the watch. And if <laughs> if uh, Garmin go bankrupt, well, I can still connect my watch on my computer with the USB connection and extract the data from the watch and send it to Strava. That's a big deal. Okay, now let's talk about the price. And I will not tell you the price just like that because price does change over time from a store to another, from a country to another. So if you want to see the price, you can go in the description, hit the link, um, and it will send you to a store of your country and you will be able to see the price in your country. And it's an affiliate link. So if you buy the watch, from that link, well, I thank you for it because I do receive a commission after you buy something after clicking on that link. And that helped me to buy some other watches and do great review like the one you are watching right now. So if you buy from there, thank you. This being said, the price. I don't think it's overpriced. I think you get what you pay for. Uh, it's a great, again, it's a great build quality, it does a lot of stuff, it gives you precise information, but I think that if you put just a little bit more money, you can get a Garmin Phoenix, which is the same category of watch, and you will have so much more. More battery, mapping, better interface, you can edit it straight from the watch, you don't need the app, you can use it, but you don't need it. I think you got something better with Garmin for a little bit more money. But if you just put a little bit more money, you will get a Phoenix base model and you will have to put, again, more money to get the Sapphire Crystal Glass that you already have of that one. The Sapphire Crystal Glass is a big deal for me. So yeah, at the end, I think it's not overpriced, but you can get better with a bit more money. Now, let's talk about the antenna that we find inside. Uh, some watches have Wi-Fi to sync the activity. This one doesn't have it. And the other antenna we are looking for is to connect other device. Uh, footstep, uh, uh, cycling stuff, and all of those kind of device. You can earth rate sensor. Um, those kind of device you can connect to it. You will want to look for Bluetooth only. This is not compatible with ANT and ANT+. Plus. It's just Bluetooth compatible. Now, the USB connection. It's at the back on the heart rate sensor. You need that cable that come with the watch. And the idea is kind of good, but the execution is not that good. Uh, at first, I was just <laughs> putting in on it just like that and looking for oh, like that it does fit like that and at the end you, you see you have the uh, you have that little red stuff here and that red stuff here so you have to align it but when you put it it just it doesn't sit on it very well every time 
I love the magnet stuff, but this one is just not this great. I mean, it work, it work, but it's not that great. And uh, if you just shake it a little bit, it does fall. So the magnet could be stronger and it should be made so that it's more easy to to clip. And actually it does, it does look easy like that, but well, it's not that bad, but I don't really like it. By the way, while you're still there, uh, that is a review, but I also made a lot of tutorial video in which you will see how to do a lot of stuff and how to use the watch. You can uh, see the link just right here or the link will also be into the description. Next point is about live track. Live track is an option you can find on Garmin watches that let you um, <laughs> that let you share your actual location to someone else or a group of someone else. Well, it's, it's not available. Now let's come back to the application. The application, like I told you earlier, is available on your phone, Android and iOS, on Mac and Windows. Uh, well, Linux. Linus also uh, because well it's on the web it's on the web page so um, you can access the app from multiple devices and it's really really well done and I told you earlier that I hate the interface of the watch but I love the interface of the app it's really really well done on the app not on the watch <laughs> but I, I love the way they dispose every data. I think everything when you when you look at the uh, at the end, your activity, your uh, resume of the activity, it is fun to look at. The way they made it, the color, maybe the disposition, the logo. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's weird. It's kind of simplish, but it's well done. It, it's fun to look at your stats at the end of the activity because the app is very well done. Customer service. That's kind of impressing. A bit deceiving at the end, but kind of impressed. The first time I sent them an email, I didn't call, I just sent an email. Um, <laughs> I think it was about the uh, backlight stuff. I want to find a better solution. And they answer me, in less than 15 minutes and I reply and again they reply in less than 15 minutes every time I send them an email they reply inside 15 minutes that's huge that's huge <laughs> 15 minutes it's very 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 fast I never never with any company had a reply this quick 15 minutes <laughs> Uh, but at the end, the answer was kind of not that good. Uh, well, so they tell me, well, no, there is no nothing you can do. That's how it's made. Okay. I would have like, um, yeah, you're right. It's terrible. Uh, we will look into it for a future update. Eventually, we will work on this, but no. Uh, I think what I have understand is that Polar hire a company to answer email, so they don't really care about the product because they're just hired by the company. So it's a bit weird, but still, if you have question, you will have answer really quickly. So in the end, is it a watch that I recommend to you? Uh, no, <laughs> um, no, just because I think you can have a lot better with a Garmin Phoenix, which is the same kind of watch. But again, I except the fact that the battery doesn't last very long and it's poorly programmed because there is a lag, because uh, stuff are um, long and tedious to access sometimes. Um, I know there's better on the market in the same price range, so that's that's the only reason why I don't recommend it uh, but if you are already into the polar world you love polar 
you already love the watch that you you have and you want to upgrade because you have your watch since a long time and you want something that does a bit more well that's that's still a great watch it's a great watch but it's not a watch that i recommend just because if you go with the garmin phoenix you will have more battery you will have mapping you will have a better interface you will be able to modify all your stuff straight into the watch you will have great widget you got you got great navigation the buttons works better that's the only reason I, i'm not recommended me maybe if it was cheaper i would recommend it but i mean it doesn't have to be cheaper um it doesn't have to be cheaper because the build quality is great it's just poorly programmed the interface have a lack of work they need to bit to to put a bit more love into it so don't forget in the description you have the links to well buy the watch if you still want it even if it's not a watch that i recommend uh, you have the links to the tutorials of that watch if you want to see even more and you also have links to my other uh review of other watches if you're thinking to buy another watch so enjoy so this is it thank you for watching i hope you enjoy and if you need help to find this product online please see my links in the description and finally don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you're looking for a great review video see ya